truck, run out in the van and get that sample of carpet. Is it in the van? It's on my desk? Okay. <laughs> you get to make a choice right there. <laughs> But you give away. Everybody here gets to come up and look at it. <laughs> We're going to choose the carpet from one of those right there. Oh, if you're glad you're saved, say amen. All right, take your Bible and turn to the book of Revelation and turn to Revelation chapter 2. I want to encourage you to uh, ask questions. Please ask. That's how you, uh, that's how you learn, by asking. So uh, please ask. We'll take the time to go over it. All right, Revelation chapter 2, and uh, now where is my notes? I'm going to have to have, I'm going to have to have, that's last week, okay, this is last week, but this is not, uh, it, uh, okay, that's where I want to start. Now take your notes from last week. And turn back to this uh, back side, the back uh, sheet, the second sheet. You, you need that? <laughs> second sheet. Uh, anybody need last week's? Anybody need last week's? And uh, turn to last week page. It would be, we don't have a, on the top of the page is Jeremiah 50, 19. I want to go down to, we're going to start at Hosea chapter 2. Now this is on the, let's read the verse, Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, and uh, verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear with the Spirit, with the Spirit, saith, that saith unto the churches, to him that overcometh, will I give to eat, of the hidden manna, hidden manna, so underline that, hidden manna. Now the hidden manna is given to those in the tribulation, the great tribulation, those that have overcome the mark of the beast. And so that means somebody that did not take the mark and who is has the seal in his forehead but not the mark in this period. That's after the rapture. And those that are lost, they stay here, go into the great tribulation, and then those folks that are saved out of the great tribulation. Now, uh, they overcome the mark of the beast, so they get something. What do they get? They get, underline it, hidden manna. And we talked about this manna before. We give several cross-references on it. The manna went over to the Old Testament to Exodus, the book of Exodus. Went over here in the Exodus chapter 16. So write down hidden manna. Then write down Exodus chapter 16 over here. Here's your manna. So you're, you're studying now the hidden part of the manna. The manna is there. You know what manna is. If you've read Exodus chapter 16, the manna is that stuff that come down. The children of Israel went out and gathered it up and baked it and cooked it and made it into cakes and made bread out of the thing. And it uh, was uh, like honey. Uh, yes, the Gentiles can uh, have part in it because they're uh, partly saved too. I mean, not partly saved. They're saved in the tribulation sense of the word. Take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter 7. And notice Gentiles are included in with these Jews. Uh, Revelation chapter 7 now. And answer your question, are the Gentiles included in this thing with the tribulation saint of the 144,000? Revelation 7, 4. And I heard the number of them that were sealed, and there were sealed a 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So they're Jews. Uh, then it says in verse 5 that the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000, the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000, the tribe of God were sealed 12,000 and right on down through the line. There's 12 tribes there. Now there's two tribes missing. Ephraim and Dan are missing in the chronology. 
Those are the two tribes that are left out. And that's because of their sin of idolatry that's mentioned in the book of Judges. Judges chapter 17. The entire chapter. And Judges chapter 18. They have a sin of idolatry. And that's why Dan and Ephraim are not in the chronology. Now, get down to verse 9. We're going to switch over to Gentiles now. After this, verse 9, And after this, behold, to lo, a great multitude, which no man could number. Now, unplain in verse 9. Of all nations and kindred and people and tongue stood before the throne and before the Lamb, cold with white robes. So in the tribulation, there's not only the Jews are saved, but also a great number of Gentiles are saved out of that period of time. So they get fed likewise. Because there's no rain for three and a half years. For three and a half years, there's no rain. So everybody's starving to death without the Lord feeding them. Or they're eating, the, they're eating the animals. And then they're eating each other eventually. And that's what it'll boil down to in the end. All right. Now, uh, let's pick up some verses. First of all, look at your notes. Hosea. Hosea chapter 2. Now you need to turn to it because it, it needs a little bit of uh, uh, marks. You need to put some uh, things with it so you can understand the passage. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea. And turn to Hosea chapter 2. Hosea chapter 2. And let's pick up some things now. Let's pick up verse 14. You, you got to get this thing here. Verse 14. Hosea chapter 2, verse 14. And it says, Therefore, behold, I will lure her. Circle the word her, and then a margin of your Bible, write down, the nation of Israel. Her. She's referred to as female. She is uh, referred to over there in Revelation chapter 12 as a woman. Now, underline the word her. And bring her, the nation of Israel, unto, now underline the place that she's brought to, unto the wilderness. That's where she's at in Revelation chapter 12, verse 14. So right in the margin of your Bible, beside the verse 14, right, Revelation chapter 12, verse 14, because that's where Israel is at during the tribulation. She's in the wilderness. And speak comfortably unto her, and I will give her her vineyards. There it is again. And for since, in the valley of Achor. Now the valley of Achor is just, uh, just, let me get my directions correct, just east of Jericho before you cross the Jordan River. Now the valley of Achor, you need to write it down, the valley of Achor is east of Jericho and west of the Jordan River. So here's, uh, here's the land of Palestine, here's the Sea of Galilee, here's the Jordan River, here's the Dead Sea. And here's uh, Jerusalem, and Jericho's right there. Jericho's there. Uh, uh, Bethlehem is just a little bit over here. Uh, then Jericho's right there, and the Valley of Achor is before you cross the Jordan River, in right in there, right in there, Valley of Achor. But it's east of Jericho and west of Jordan. So that's what you want to write down. All right. Uh, verse 15. In the valley of Achor, for a door of hope. Now that's, so he's given the children of Israel hope during the tribulation. Now watch what it says. And she shall sing, underline the word sing. So at the second advent of Christ, it talks about singing for the nation of Israel, the Jews. They're going to sing at a particular time. Sing. And that is when Christ comes back to the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem, and the olive splits in half, and Christ walks into Jerusalem and says, I am the king. And when Christ does that, the nation of Israel is going to sing, 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 sing. And you'll see that word several times throughout the Old Testament connected with the millennial reign of Christ. 
And that's because the Jews are being persecuted here. Then when they get into the millennium, the Lord says, okay, now's the time for you boys to sing. So they start singing because the Lord delivered them. All right. Now, again, now here's what you want to underline in verse 15. As, circle the word as, 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 as. So he's telling you something. A, as, as. So he's likening to this period of time of the tribulation when the, they come back and sing and they start singing the things all over, second advent of Christ, then he's going to liken that to what? He said, uh, as in the days of he, uh, her youth, and as in the days when she come forth out of the land of Egypt. So he says, this right here, when they're singing right there, getting ready to sing, is going to be like what? Like when they come up out of the land of Egypt. So right now it's going to be like Exodus chapter 16, 17, and 18. So right there in Hosea, in Hosea chapter 2, right down, the second advent of Christ is going to be like Exodus 16, 17, and 18. What happened? They're fed with manna. They're fed with manna. They're fed with manna. So what happens over here? They're going to be fed with man over here. All right. Uh, again now. Uh, yes, question. All right. Now take your Bible and turn to Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel chapter 20. And uh, look at this thing again. Ezekiel chapter 20, and let's pick up uh, verse, uh, what is it, 35? 35, let's begin at verse 35. I will bring you into the wilderness. There it is again, Revelation chapter 20, I mean Revelation chapter 12. I will bring you to the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. And it's going to be face to face, he pleads with them. Like as, now underline the two words. So when the Lord wanted to teach you something in the scripture, he gives you two words. The, the greatest two words in the Bible, write this down. The greatest two words in the Bible are like and as. That's the greatest two words in the entire Bible. Like, when God wants to show you something in the Bible, he's always saying, like this, like this, like this. And then he gives you something to show you what the thing's like. Or he'll say, as, as. When you see those two right back, you want to stop and say, okay, I understand this. I know what that is. And then he'll give you something to compare it over here. Like as I pleaded with your fathers, now I'm explaining this, in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So there it is again. It's like when he brought you out of the land of Egypt way back there in the Old Testament. All right. Now uh, take your Bible and uh, look at uh, Micah chapter 7, verse 14. Micah. Micah chapter 7. So you have uh, uh, Jonah, Micah, Mayhem. Micah chapter 7. And let's pick up verse 14 this time. Now here it is again. Are you ready? Uh, verse 14. Feed thy people with thy rod. Underline the word rod. Rod. Uh, the flock of thy inheritance, which dwell in a solitary in the woods, in the midst, underline it, of Carmel. We talked about Carmel uh, last week in the notes on uh, Jeremiah chapter 50. Carmel. You, I showed you where Carmel was on the map. And let them feed in Bashan. And I showed you where Bashan was on the map. All right. And Gilead. Showed you where Gilead was on the map. So this is another cross-reference to it. Now look what follows. Look what follows. So he feeds the Jews with manna in those three places plus other places. 
But look at the, how it's worded. As in the days of old. And why not? Very important. According to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt. So why they say that? Because he wants the Jews to know where to go to find that manna when they don't have anything to, anything to eat. So they're to flee into the wilderness and go to those places because they read the scripture, Lord's going to show them where to go and how to find it. It's going to rain down. Yes. Into the wilderness. By night. I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Don't know. You better help me. Well, the thing about the the thing about the book of Revelation is it's not written chronological. I can't get the word <laughs> chronologically. It's not written that way. So those angels that are flying may already be there when the children of Israel are looking for the manna. That could be part of it. He might be leading with the angels of the flying in heaven, preaching the everlasting gospel. That might be part of it. But no. Take your Bible, turn to Revelation chapter 12. This is what it is, if you can explain this. Revelation chapter 12, verse uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 14. Uh, Brother Chuck Pope, this is the answer to your question. Revelation chapter 12, verse 14 says, And to the woman... Now you want to write there to the woman, you want to go back to verse 1, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman, that woman is Israel, the nation of Israel, Revelation 12, 1, that's not Mary, it's the nation of Israel, not Mary. Now, verse 14, and the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. That she might fly unto the wilderness to her place where she shall be nourished for a time and for time and a half time from the face of the serpent. So if you can find out what the, the eagle with two wings flying into the wilderness is, you would find out how they got there. So it's an, he describes it this way. He describes, here's the Jews. And the Jews are in Jerusalem. And the Antichrist comes in and sits down. He comes from somewhere and sits down on the mercy seat because the temple's rebuilt. And the mercy seat's sitting there like that. And the cherubim's on this side. And the cherubim on this side. And the mercy seat right in the middle. And the Antichrist comes into the temple and sits down on the mercy seat and says, I'm God. And then the Jews say, no way. And they, they run. They run. They see like that. And when they run... That's, that's described with an eagle of his two great wings that carries him away into the wilderness. He's described by doing that. Now what that eagle is that carries him away with two great wings is uh, you're going you're gonna to guess at it. I'm going to guess at it. It's an airplane. I'm guessing. But what? I mean they carried away. They're carried away with an eagle with two wings. And if you was like John, way back here in uh, the Isle of Patmos, 90 A.D., and you was going to describe, in 90 A.D., that's when the book of Revelation is written, and you're going to describe Israel flying away from Jerusalem, and you're going to, here's a, you see something come in there. Whew, man, that's a great eagle flying there with two great wings. And everybody boards it and gets on it and leaves. You say an eagle with two great wings. I'm just I'm guessing, folks. And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she may fly into the wilderness. 
Now, does that mean the nation of Israel <laughs> went like this? Or was it an airplane? There's an airplane right there. There's an airplane right there, and that airplane takes off and a bunch of Jews on it. Another airplane, a bunch of Jews on it. Another airplane, a bunch of Jews on it. Another airplane, a bunch of Jews on it. And everybody running by foot. Get now the best they can. And that's what's going to happen in Matthew chapter 25. Take your Bible and look at Matthew chapter 25 and watch the thing happen. Matthew chapter 25. In uh, Matthew chapter 25, this is what happens to the nation of Israel as they flee into the wilderness. All right, Matthew chapter 25 and pick up verse 13. Matthew 25, 13, turn to the verse. And it says, But he that shall endure unto the end, not a Christian, a tribulation saint, he's enduring to the end of the tribulation, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom, not the church age, shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then Matthew 24, what did they say? 25? 20, 24, Matthew 24, 13. Go back to Matthew 24, 13. I give you the wrong cross reference. Matthew 24, 13. I have to slow down. He that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom, not the church age, the gospel of the kingdom, shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations. So there's the two angels that are flying and preaching the gospel. And then shall the end come, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place. So I told you, he goes in, sits on the mercy seat, and sits down and says, I am God. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee unto the mountains, and let him which was on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. For woe to them that are with child, to them that give suck in those days. Why, if you're running with a baby, boy, it's going to be rough duty. And you're running, you're pregnant, it's going to be rough duty. Why? Because you're running for the lives. He said, don't, when you come down off the housetop, don't go back in the house and get anything. Run for your life because you're liable to lose it. If you go back in there to get some junk out of the house, you're, you'll lose your life. So he says, you're out in the field, don't go back to the house. You're out in the field, go, man. You get the news, the Antichrist has come in and set up, don't even take, go back to the house. You're in the field, head for the woods, man. Go out in the wilderness to save your life. And so that's what's happened. So, brother, Chuck Pope, it said the woman had two wings like a great eagle. That's how she got where she got. Probably stayed there in like Sela Petra. That's one of the places, Sela Petra. Now, if you've ever seen Sela Petra in, in pictures and stuff, it's a rock city. It's down here south of the Dead Sea. Sela Petra is down in there, and it's a rock city, and you have to go through a, a canyon that's about this wide. And the canyon goes way up there. And you go in through that canyon like this, go in there through like that, and there's a city made out of rock inside that thing. Have anybody ever seen pictures of Sela Petra? That's one of the places. That's one of the places they're going to be hiding. But they're going to be hiding from the Antichrist. Then they come out of there and get the manna and turn around and go back in for three and a half years. But they're being chased for their lives. They're being chased. The Antichrist wants to kill them. So the Antichrist hires hunters. And the Bible says in one place it says hunters. Like uh, H-U-N-T-E-R. And those fellows are hunting them. Hunting the Jews out to kill them. And the Jews ran there, but they're out hunting for them. They're trying to kill them. Hunt, trying to find them. Hunting for them. But with a hunting rifle. They, they don't believe the Bible. Who believes the Bible? God has to show you the Bible through, and you have to believe the Bible. You know something I'm showing you here? Thousands of people in America have never even heard about it, and even thought about it, and we've got the Bible all over America, in every house of America, and nobody knows even what it is, because they don't read the Bible. You don't read the Bible. You never heard that. You don't know it. They had the Bible for a century. But if the Lord shows you something, brother, he can show you something. See that? All right. Now, uh, take your Bible and turn to... Uh, 
Turn to Psalm chapter 74. Psalm chapter 74. Psalms chapter 74. Psalm chapter 74. Pick up verse 13. And when you get down in these things, brother, you got to remember you're eating meat. You're eating meat. So don't choke on meat. Psalm chapter 74, verse 13. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. Thou breakest the heads of the Viathan in pieces and give him to be meat to the people, now underline it, inhabiting the wilderness. So the manna comes from somewhere. Where does the manna come from? It comes from the head of Leviathan. Heads, underline the plural, it said heads of Leviathan. Now, how many of you have any idea who Leviathan is? It's Satan. Okay, now write down the cross references. Job chapter 41. The entire chapter. Job chapter 41. The entire chapter. To show you that Leviathan is the devil. Is the devil. And write down Revelation chapter 12. Showing you he has seven heads. Revelation chapter 12. One through four. Showing you Leviathan has seven heads. So up there. There's a seven-headed dragon that has seven heads, and the Lord does what? He smites him. And then from that comes down this manna. And the manna falls there, and the manna falls up here, and the manna falls over here, the manna falls here, and the manna falls there. Falls around the places, different places. It falls. And they, they sneak out there and get it and, and make, uh, make bread out of it. And cook it, bake it. Now take your Bible and turn to uh, turn to uh, Lamentations chapter five, verse nine. Lamentations, the book of Lamentations. Now uh, the entire book of Lamentations is written to the tribulation saint. The entire book of Lamentations. Is written to the tribulation saint. Now you can get spiritual application out of it for you as a Christian. Lamentations chapter 5 and pick up verse 9. Now notice how this thing's connected with Revelation chapter 12, verse 14. Lamentation chapter 5, verse 9. We get our bread with. Now underline the next four words. What does it say? With what? With the peril of our lives. You know why they get to bread with the peril of their lives? Because they're taking a chance leaving the place that they're hiding and they're liable to get shot while they're picking up that manna. That's what's happening. They're out there picking up manna, but, they're, but, they're, but there's some folks out there who want to kill them. Do you know a great hatred for the Jews? They're going to blame the Jews for everything. They're going to come time where America says the problem is the Jewish nation. And then they're going to turn against the Jewish nation. The whole world's going to turn against the Jewish nation, and it's right then that they're going to do it. They're going to do it through the tribulation. All right, now take your Bible and turn to Matthew, and turn to Matthew chapter 6, and look at verse 11. Matthew chapter 6, verse 11. Then we'll go on with our... Uh, with the book of Revelation. Matthew chapter 6 and uh, verse 11. Now watch what it says. Give us this day our daily bread. Now brethren, you don't need to pray that. You know why? Because you got so much bread coming out your ears. Say amen. Now these folks this prayer is given to a tribulation saint. Give us this day our daily bread. That's a prayer given just before the advent of Christ. Where they're saying, Lord, if you don't take care of us, we're going to be in big trouble. So they're praying, give us this day our daily bread. And they get it each day, just like they did in the Old Testament. 
they get enough to go for the day. Be the manna, the same manna that they got in the Old Testament came the same way. And down in Sheila Petra, uh, down in Carmel, and and uh, Bashan and Gilead, and it's gonna fall. But you and I don't have to worry about it. We'll not be there. We'll be up in heaven. Oh, sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely. That that would be the spiritual application for it. Absolutely. If you were starving to death, you could pray that prayer and get away with it. God honor it. But if you had so much food, you didn't know what to do with it, boy, you'd have a hard time praying that prayer. Wouldn't you, folks? <laughs> I mean, when's the last time you prayed, give us this day our daily bread, when you was praying a prayer and really didn't know what you was talking about? See? But uh, some folks down there could pray it. I could pray it, give us this day. Why? Because they don't know where they're going to be eaten two to three days from now. All right, back to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Uh, Revelation chapter 2, and pick up verse, the rest of the verse. A hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone, a white stone. Now, right there with a the white stone, you want to write down Exodus chapter 28, Exodus chapter 28, 9 through 10. Now take your Bible and turn to Exodus, a white stone. Turn to Exodus, and turn to Exodus chapter 28. And uh, this white this white stone's a little difficult. It's uh, hard to uh, hard to pinpoint it, and I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> so you can put a question mark there if you want to. <laughs> Exodus chapter 28. I'm going to guess at it now because I'm 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 not certain. I'm just guessing. Now, folks, when I say I'm guessing, I mean just exactly what I'm saying. I'm guessing. <laughs> uh, Exodus chapter 28. There's a white stone uh, mentioned in the passage. All right, uh, verse 9. And thou shalt take two oxen stone, an onyx, O-N-Y-X, an onyx. Now, Brother uh, Phil Seeler, did you study, have you studied that onyx? You need to study it. It's a white stone. It's a white stone. Now, if you studied it, you could study that thing out, and you'd come up with something what he's talking about in Revelation chapter 2, where it says uh, their name, uh, give him a white stone. And in the stone, a new name written. And I don't know what that is either. Which no man knoweth, uh, save he that receiveth it. So he gets a new name, and uh, nobody knows the new name except the fellow that receives it, and the new name's in the white stone. wonder if he carries the white stone around in his pocket. <laughs> And somebody says, what's your name? I'm not going to tell you. But my new name's right here on this stone in my pocket. <laughs> yes, it goes mine. I don't know what thing is. I can't give you that. I, now, in Exodus chapter 28, I'll tell you what that was. In Exodus 28, 9, now so two oxen stone. Now the onyx, the onyx stone, go back up to verse 7. It shall have the two shoulder pieces. So in this thing that the uh, children of Israel have been commanded to uh, make for the high priest is a uh, thing that, that's like this. It's, uh, uh, it's a shoulder, has two shoulder pieces on it. And it has, uh, here's a man's, uh, well, this is going to be difficult. <laughs> uh, as a shoulder piece here, and here's his head. And the shoulder piece here comes down, his arms come down. I'm a great artist, you can see that. And that shoulder piece comes out like this. And has six names on this side and six names on this side. And that thing is connected around here like that, and then it comes over here like that. Here's a breastplate on that thing like this. And has one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like that. And there's four rows. No, that wouldn't be right. That would be, has to be this. It has to be three. It has to be one, two, three. 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 That makes 12. Anybody with me? Now that's what that thing is like. 
Now the the onyx stone is right here on the shoulder piece, right there on the shoulder piece. The onyx. I saw on the shoulder piece. And six names of the children of Israel written on this one, and six names of the children of Israel written on this one. So they wrote on those stones. Now you can see that in the passage that is before you. If you look at verse 6, and they shall make an ephod of gold. See that? That's an ephod. That's a thing that's down here like this on the chest. Uh, now verse uh, 7, and it shall have two shoulder pieces. So this thing's connected with these two shoulder pieces. All right. Verse 8, the curious girdle of the ephod which is upon it shall be the same according to the work therein, even a gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine fine linen. Now verse 9. And thou shalt take the two onyx stones and grave upon them the names of the children of Israel. Six of their names on one stone and the other six names of the rest on the other stone according to their birth. So they're done according to their birth. So Dan, Ephraim, Manasseh, uh, and six of them are on that side and the other six are on that side. And then these stones in the middle are given according to their birth like the same way, and the, nation, and the children of Israel is the same thing. This thing opens up, has a gap in it like this, and opens up, and the Urim and Thurim go down inside that. The Urim and Thurim go inside that thing. When the nation of Israel wants and comes and require at the Urim and Thurim, this thing lights up. This thing lights up on the priest's chest, lights up and gives an answer to them. Because sometimes they require at the Urim and Thurim of, throughout the Old Testament, and that's what that thing is. All right, now, uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. All right, Revelation 2, 17. Uh, a new name written, which no man know, save, uh, save he that receive it. Now, there's a cross-reference in your note over there in Samuel. Can somebody give me the cross-reference in Samuel, in your notes? First Samuel 25, 25. Now take your Bible and turn to First Samuel chapter 25, and I'll show you why a new name that's given in a white stone is connected with the tribulation saint. Tribulation saint gets a new name and uh, written in a white stone. And whether he carries it in his pocket or what, I don't know. I'm not really sure about the thing. But uh, here's a key verse you want to write down. Uh, first Samuel chapter 25 and pick up verse 25. Now this is Abigail and this is Abigail talking about, uh, 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 Nabus, 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 how do you pronounce that guy's name? Nabal, Nabal. Uh, sec first Samuel 25, 25. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial. Even Nabal, for as his name is, underline that, for as his name is, so is he. So is he. So a man's name is connected with his character and what he is. A man's name is connected with his character and what he is. Why, some way or another. And I don't know how it is, but it's like this. What did God do with Peter? He gave him a new name. Now, you know, it was Simon, and he gave him a new name. <laughs> changed it to Peter. It used to be Simon, he changed it to Peter. Okay, what was Paul's old name? Saul. So the Lord goes through there, and you can go through there, and God takes and takes and say, okay, I'm going to change this fellow's name. It has to do with that tribulation saint getting his name changed because he won the victory, boy. He won the victory, he overcome. So Lord James, you can give him a new name. Now, uh, that's the best I can do with it. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. And pick up verse, uh, if you get more on it, let me know. <laughs> Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write. Now he goes to another church. These things saith the Son of God. So underline that, the Son of God. Now, when he said, these things saith the Son of God, you want to write down chapter 1, you should have it in your notes, chapter 1, 13 through 18. You want to write that in the margin of your Bible. Write down chapter 1, 13 through 18. So when he said, these things saith the Son of God, 
you'll know without a shadow of doubt when you read chapter 1, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, that you're talking about Jesus Christ. And you won't be worried about it, frustrated about it, because it says, like, in verse 13, like the Son of Man. And you'll find, well, he's not talking about Jesus Christ, he's talking about somebody else. No, no, he's talking about Jesus Christ. And you know that for absolutely certain, because it says in verse 18 of chapter 2, these things saith the Son of God, so write it down, the Lord Jesus Christ is talking, who hath his eyes likened to the flame of fire, that's given back there in chapter 1, and his feet were like fine brass, that's like back there in chapter 1. I know thy works, and we've talked about that before. The Lord knows what your works are. You don't have to worry about what other people think. The Lord knows, but that'll go positive and negative. Uh, thy charity, the Lord's bragging about them. They got charity. And service, underline that, service. They, they serve, they serve. And faith, they walk by faith. So he's bragging on them. Thy patience. <laughs> now, brethren, you ought to have all those things. You ought to have all those things. Patience, patience, patience. And works. Now watch what he says. He's bragging on them. And last to be more than the first. Now that's great. The last to be more than the first. So he's talking about this church and said, you, you folks started out here. You started out here and you had, 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 a, had some works there. But boy, when you got over the end, boy, you had the last was great in the works. And you know something, that, that's important. A lot of folks can start out, but they can't finish. The hardest thing is to finish the job. Finish the job. Go all the way to the end. Quite often, something's built and it's not quite finished. And that happens all over the place. Time after time after time, there's some little thing left undone. Go all the way to the end, brother. Fix the whole thing. Don't quit till it's over. Now, he's bragging on them. The last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding. Oh, he's going to give them some negative part. Now, <laughs> he did mess up. <laughs> Notwithstanding, I have a few. I'm trying the word few. Thank God it was just a few. He didn't. There wasn't a whole bunch of things, but they had a few things. You've got a few things wrong with you, too. A few, so underline few, things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, Jezebel, write down 1 Kings chapter 16, if you don't have it, write down 1 Kings chapter 16 in the margin of your Bible, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants, and to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrifice unto idols, and the long word idols. So Jezebel is connected with, write down, the connection she's connected with, is she's connected with this woman in Revelation chapter 17 and 18. So Jezebel, this woman, is in Revelation chapter 17. So in the margin of your Bible, write down, Revelation chapter 17 and chapter 18 is, is Jezebel. Now if you want to study these two chapters, you study Jezebel. Now, let's study Jezebel for a minute. No, we ain't got much time to study her. But uh, I'm going to give you some chapters. I give you some notes tonight. I give you several cross-references on Jezebel. And je write down this in your notes. Uh, if you're there, write down, study. I didn't write it down. I want you to write it down. Study Jezebel's religion. Study Jezebel's religion. And her religion is Baal. She's a Baalite. And that'll come up very important because she's going to, all the things that connected with her is going to be connected with this woman that's a, called a great whore in Revelation chapter 17 and 18. Going to be connected with her. Now, let's quit. Right there. <laughs> let's quit right there and we'll come back and we'll pick up this woman Jezebel. She's a she's a quite a gal. <laughs> All right. Prayer request. All right. Are you praying for him? Okay. All right. Praying for the various mom and dads that travel. Okay. What else? Yes. Okay. All right. Pray for Craig Hawk as he goes to Nashville. Okay, what else do you need to remember in prayer? Good to see you then. And boy, I like a nice clean shave. <laughs> He's a good looking guy. 
banyak Okay. Okay. Now, I don't want you to forget to pray for Sean. He'll be getting closer and closer to getting married. To uh, pray that he don't chicken out. <laughs> I don't think he will. I don't think he will. I'm just joking with you folks. <laughs> I think he'll do it, go all the way. But you have to admit, you're 40 years old. That's quite a step. Quite a step for both of you. All right. What else do we need to 